it's hard to find signs of light at the end of the climate change tunnel. More regular and extreme weather events and continued warnings of rampant global warming see to that. But sometimes science offers a glimmer of hope. Take, for example, Professor Jill Ferrant and her plants that rise from the dead. Myrothamnus flabellifolia. Flabellifolia, but I like to call it myro. Myro is very special to me, and I have a little campaign going called Save the Myro. And that's basically to save this plant for our use in the future. To understand why its future preservation may be crucial to dealing with our coming challenges, we first need a trip into the past. Molecular biologist Professor Jill Ferrant has had a long love affair with Myro. They first met on a farm in the Waterberg Limpopo when she was just nine years old. Jill remembers playing in an area on their farm called Flat Rocks, a dead and dry riverbed. I noticed the phenomenon of what we call resurrection, a dead looking plant coming alive after rain. And I did mention this to my father who didn't really take me seriously. The plant nine-year-old Jill had seen wondrously reviving was what she now calls Myro. What Jill didn't know then was that Myro would play a significant part in her life and bring her research to world attention. But it was 20 years before Jill, after completing her PhD and postdoc, went back to the farm to collect samples of the plant she'd noticed as a child. This was the beginning of her investigation into the phenomenon of resurrection plants, the basis of her life's work. What is so special about resurrection plants? Derek, they're the only plants in the world that can lose all their water and not die. Most plants can lose between 10 and 20% of their water. Nothing can survive as much as 95% loss. So it's a very rare phenomenon. How long does it take for them to revive? It depends on the species. Most of them take 12 hours to be totally green and totally fully hydrated. To witness this for ourselves, we picked a few rather dead looking sprigs of this resurrection plant that grows wild in the Cape. This little fern on Table Mountain, if you look really closely, it's got orange hairs. And those hairs sense relative humidity and the water. Um, and in fact, allow the leaf to open up. And it's absolutely exquisite. I cannot wait to show you how this thing resurrects. And we're going to put it to the test tomorrow. The next morning in Jill's lab at the University of Cape Town, we set up cameras, added water and waited. Within 10 minutes, the leaves started moving, unfurling. After an hour and 17 minutes, they were noticeably greener and alive. I was a farmer's daughter, and one is always very aware of the weather, particularly the rain. Or as often the case here, a lack of rain. A plant apparently dead one minute, green and alive the next, got this farmer's daughter thinking. And so understanding a phenomenon about a plant that can lose all its water and not die immediately made me think, well, beautiful for crops. Because, I mean, how many days was I there with my father crying for the rain and everything died? Well, I can reverse that through this research. I'm trying to make crops that can lose all their water but not die. With climate change and extreme weather conditions a reality, nature is offering us a means of survival. Plants that refuse to die could lead to a breakthrough in food security. And that's about more than simply helping drought-stricken farmers. It's about finding ways of helping humanity through what many are calling a coming catastrophe. The predictions are that by 2050, South Africa is going to be a desert with not enough rain to sustain any agriculture. And if we can, in fact, have resurrection crops, well, at least we're going to get food. As a molecular physiologist, Jill is trying to understand how these plants lose all their water and stay alive. We've come to the understanding that what they are actually using are seed genes. Now, you and I know that you can buy a packet of seeds, they, they dry, dry it out, leave them in your cupboard for weeks or months, and they're still alive. Yeah. So they're desiccated but alive. Resurrection plants are desiccated but alive. And they have used their seed genes in their roots and leaves. So it's the seeds that effectively contain the instruction booklet, the genes to switch the plant back to life. 
By identifying and isolating the gene sequence that holds this property, they can reprogram other crops like maize to take on the ability to resurrect, to come back to life. The big mission for Jill and her students at the UCT Research Unit is to identify and replicate these genes in resurrection plants, which actually help them to defy death. PhD student Chandri Tabele has a personal motive in her research. The reason I actually started this research is because my grandmother, she was a farmer. So she would struggle during farming. You find that uh, there is no water because I'm from Limpopo and in Limpopo oh. it's very dry. So for me to tap into this research, it made me to find solution in a sense that, okay, if I get the special microbes, we can actually even use them and assist a lot of farmers out there to overcome the drought problem in the world or in the country. And you could be helping your family in Limpopo. Oh, yes, Limpopo. back home. <laughs> 240 of these resurrection plants that virtually awaken from the dead have been identified around the world. And all but a handful are from Africa. In fact, Myra is one of the most well-known resurrection plant because it's so distinct. I mean, yeah. it sits on these rocks, it looks like hell. And it rains yeah. and the next day, you know, it's bright and green. Myro and the other ancient resurrection plants have been used in traditional African medicine for centuries. One of the nicknames for Myro is Bobian Daha, because if you actually smoke the dried leaves, it, it's an anti-asthmatic. Oh. You don't get a high. For Jill and her students, the mountain is their playground, bursting with biological and botanical diversity. It's like um, you're painting uh, with green. I am. It's a passion that's brought Jill huge acclaim, winning her numerous awards and nominations. And then she discovered her favorite plant, Myro, had properties that led her into a whole new world. Italian designer Giorgio Armani was interested in the characteristics of this plant and how it could possibly be used in cosmetics. Giorgio Armani decided to make Myro Thamnus the key active in a skincare range which is called Crema Nera Extrema. So I was invited to be the scientific consultant. So Jill, if I look at my gnarly hands, a bit of Myro could help there in a cream. Myro could definitely help. You know, in that cream, you've got a very rich antioxidant protection. Higher than vitamin C. 30 times higher. I mean, this is a powerful antioxidant. And then this, the plant also makes certain little sugars. So this little sugar stimulates your skin breaking down all the toxins and regenerating good stuff for continued cell division and growth. You were actually interviewed by Kate Blanchett. Yes, I spent a whole weekend being interviewed and talked about, but there was only one millisecond of me. It's all about Kate. Oh. <laughs> so it's it been part of your life since yeah. you were nine years old. Yeah, I kind of think sometimes it's a bit of a destiny thing. I have yeah. meant to do this. <laughs> Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.